RGB. Like, this is the layer. We green screened this one. I color corrected it. I separated the RBG layers. I added the shakes, some glitchiness. I, 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 every frame, I, I worked on the voice too. The voice took me the longest to figure out. Like, the shakes. And my computer was dying this whole time because oh I put so God. many effects on it. Oh the my the God. amount of times oh you had to render and then you're just like, no! <laughs> yeah, and so the audio is actually three separate layers. Uh, it would have been two, but Catherine helped me out on that one to make it more clear. Um, it's a high, a normal pitch layer that's edited, echoed, reverbed, mastered, and convoluted, which just means it's thrown off to the left and right. Um, and then it's a deep layer of that. But then, to make it really come together, it didn't live without this center channel that wasn't convoluted, but was center. So getting that voice right was so pinnacle to, so paramount to what I wanted to come out of this. And we did like 30 minutes of shooting various versions of me talking to the camera, and I wanted to pick the exact dialogue that really kind of gave away my idea of what Dark is in not a terribly obvious way. The other thing... Yeah, the other thing. This was supposed to all be the same video. Yeah, but YouTube annotations, this new version, doesn't allow you to link the same video multiple times. So li these are literally the old videos that I first did when Darkiplier first came about. Like, these are the ones. Especially this one with this one here. And then this is my, this is my cheap knockoff uh, Darkiplier. Canon Darkiplier. Canon Darkiplier. <laughs> and I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna readily admit something. I... I, I joked about Darkiplier because it didn't seem like something people wanted to take seriously. And I'm okay with that on certain aspects, but it, it, was, it, was, it, it had diverged into multiple different facets and multiple different personalities, and everyone had their own version of Darkiplier. And I thought it was hilarious that, hey, here's my version of Darkiplier, he's an idiot. Like, if he's just, he's just this weird emo kid. Um, and then I stepped back from that. Like, I stepped back. And you can even, like, in that time when I was doing those, like, in this era, I was not very happy. Uh, I was actually kind of, I, I was pessimistic about a lot of things. And I, I felt like that bled through in a lot of things that I did. And that's why even October last year, I literally made Darkiplier an emo character. And then when we were getting into this, I thought about it like very carefully and I thought back to why I did it originally and I did it originally because well Darkiplier wasn't even a thing Darkiplier was not a thing when I was making those videos I just wanted to make some creepy stuff and then I thought about that and I was like if I want to make a statement about who this is I need to own that and I need to put something out there that is not ambiguous because I realized that's where I went wrong I didn't have a solid character, so obviously people would come up with their own versions. They would fill in the gaps where they saw fit. So when I made this, I had to embrace it fully and get like fine-tune it down to exactly what I wanted. And when you choose the fake choice, carrying through to this one, like I, I really wanted that to come through. Except at the like at the end of this video when it gets silly, but that's because the real me comes in. Real me's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so good. Yeah. And I've actually watched this over and over again because I, I, I'm listening to the takes that I put in here. Russian women are the best wives. And I really- We gotta find out, no! <laughs> and I just, I, I'm listening to like my inflection, my tone, my my demeanor, and, I, and I, I'm imagining like how to refine it better next time when I bring him back, like, like how to do it better. I remember now, I set up the table. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You set up the table. I did, I, we had to change it out for clear glasses because, like, the green screen was reflecting through. Right. Um, but yeah, even this, like, the inner splices of anger, and, and this is me getting real deep in the meta of, of Darkiplier, like, if, if that's even a thing that can be... <laughs> let me just pause it here. I don't, I don't read too much into this, but if something that I want to take seriously, I want to actually do right. So... In my mind, Darkiplier is an entirely different person from me. But, much like Warfstash, doesn't obey the laws of physics. He exists like in, a, in another world entirely and bleeds through into this one. Um, so, this is sounding really nerdy of me, but I just... Okay. No, I love it. Okay. I remember the Warfstash okay. talk about how he... So, 
So, completely unironically, Darkiplier is a completely separate entity from who I am. But, he admires what I've accomplished. And he, he's, he's very much... People picked up on this, and people thought that it was really creepy, because this is what I wanted. He's a social manipulator. He is, he is literally 100% manipulative. He leads you into this false sense of security, and he wants you to trust him because he wants to take advantage of you. That is literally what I wanted for Darkiplier, and how creepy and scary that actually is. From the surface, like especially in this first bit where he says, If dinner is what you want, then I can provide. Like, in this, and I wanted this to come across in a seductive way, while also masking this, this, like, burning rage inside that, that, that breaks through the suave nature of it. That was my clue to reveal, he's not your friend. He's not here to help you. He's here to use you. And that, that also came across when I was thinking about, like, the effects. He's, his, his image shatters, like, he separates because he's not, he's not entirely kept together, you know what I mean? So, like, I wanted, like, the drastic impacts of the rage pulling back suddenly to the calm nature and the demeanor. And this last one I was thinking was especially telling. It's not me trying to break through, it's his shell cracking. Yeah, you like yeah. that was my favorite. That, of that, all. that, that really one's my favorite. I yeah. legitimately just wanted to just watch that bit. Yeah, <laughs> really good. Oh, thank you. I really like that. Yeah. Because like, and the audio. What number one? The visuals were hard on this one, but nailing the audio that that high pitched ringing that a lot of people were like, "Wow, that really hurts my ears." That was by design. That was supposed to hurt because listening to him, a lot of inspiration from him comes from G Man from Half-Life 2 yeah. and 1. Like this weird interdimensional person that seems human, but is obviously not, and doesn't obey the laws of physics, and is just like this, like this shell of a person that's in a suit. Not a suit, like literally a human suit, and is trying to figure out how to puppet it right so that you believe him, but he's really good at it. And that's where, where the scariness of Darkiplier, I think, really comes from is because he seems like someone you can trust and he will manipulate manipulate you and take advantage of you and literally use you and to me that's terrifying like that's the antithesis of what i want to be and so if i'm going to make an opposite version of me he's going to be the fucking worst like worse than any romantic story can ever bring about he's fucking awful it was convenient though with actually I like the way it goes from relax to this like the video relax yeah because then people were not expecting this but it's so nice to have it on Valentine's Day like, yeah it yeah works so well. and then came the bullshit transition that we had to do so this is comical in a way this is this is it yeah it doesn't drag you get you get the scary <laughs> Tyler's here in we, Mark's uh, uh, suit just, in Mark's suit which we, I half fit in he didn't but fit. Not he, the did, pants. he didn't, didn't fit. Know. We forgot to get a tie. Like we printed out a mask. <laughs> and I looked at this and I was like, I could try to make this creepy. And then I went, I objectively can't. Let me throw in some punch sound effects. <laughs> and it's just. And I have to make sure that because he couldn't see. Sh no, shoot, I couldn't. And I was, I had to keep moving the mask because there was one time when we did this that the mask ended up completely on the side of my head. And I'm just like, hey, Mark. You can't touch my face. <laughs> <laughs> the convenient thing about this, though, with all the glitches, is yeah. that you can hide stuff with it. Yeah. <laughs> There's oh, a man. reason I never let go of Mark. I have no clue where, where you... anything is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Sun on this one, too. Oh, no, what's he talking about? Uh, this. Oh, my God. Oh, and uh, secret Easter egg. You know who Dark is because he doesn't have a shadow. Totally intentional and by design. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have toes. <laughs> He's so scary. <laughs> so uh, I'll go left toes first. Toes. Yeah, left first. I saw, I saw some fan art of uh, that fight of I you and so Faith Mark that I yeah. was kind of fighting, and then you okay. looking back and it being Tyler, and it's like, what? And he takes off the mask and it's Tom. Uh,